give a flavor for what it is that I do in terms of technology, my, my wife and I have two little girls at home. We have a, a two and a half year old and a, uh, about a five month old. And because I'm gone, I'm in DC uh, basically all week, I commute uh, virtually, uh, which is to say that my wife takes pictures on our iPhone uh, of our daughters doing fun things and uploads them to me so that during the day I get to get these picture mail. And I, uh, I realized that I was consuming a lot of bandwidth in the process, thinking about technology in the country. And I was, I was impressed by the fact that our country is moving in this direction. Uh, well over 80, 90 percent of the, uh, of the population now has access to uh, cell phone technology. That the projections today show we will be personally consuming five times more bandwidth by 2013 than we do today. The president has said basically this. We need to bend the nation's healthcare cost curve to be globally competitive. We need to upskill the higher education attainment rate in order to ensure we have the workforce to be globally competitive. And we've got to find a way to rein in our approach to energy independence so that we can both tackle the global challenges of climate change as well as to make sure that we have uh, some freedom from the challenges of the supply chain of, of energy. And so what we've done in the White House is to think about these issues and to set a little more of a narrower scope to say how can technology and innovation help address these challenges. And so I am focused on these three components, but we're looking at others too, but these are the primary components that I'm focused on. And that is how do we think about innovation platforms to spur game-changing ideas in each of these areas. And so I'll talk about them briefly and then lift and talk about the implications for communities. When we think about the uh, challenges, traditionally government has been involved on these questions in largely two ways. Number one, we fund basic research and development on healthcare, on energy, basic science, physics. We fund about $150 billion a year from the federal government promotes basic research and development. On the other hand, we also fund a lot of procurement. The government buys a lot of goods and services. And in some cases, we buy cutting edge services, but more often than not, we kind of buy a lot of the you know, older models. It's just the nature of how we do what we do. My friends from the first responding community probably suffer from this a great deal. Uh, if you ask yourself the computing power at the average cop car, uh, my iPhone probably has more computing power. The point I'm making is that we usually procure or we fund basic research. And my challenge is to try to spur innovation in between. That is that there are certain areas of these, these challenges that are a little bit more applied than the traditional research and development. And we might want to engage in ways to try to find investment opportunities to put some of that to work. So as I'm looking at one of our first responders, uh, and public safety, one of the areas that's been discussed is, you know, today uh, we have voice communications largely and some data transfer into the, into the cop cars. Imagine a future where real-time video feeds are downloaded so that we can sort of get a sense of what the uh, challenging environment is that our first responders are walking into and having the kind of broadband capacity so that they can see uh, this kind of information available to them. So there's probably some research to be done about how does one do this in an environment that, that is, that is uh, rough. In healthcare and in uh, and energy and in education, we're going to be focused on, on, on applied energy. On the other hand, there are all these innovative opportunities to buy services that we hadn't thought of in those capacities. We're in, in Virginia, just to give you an example, we ran a program. We recognized that Virginia's physics content just wasn't as up to snuff as we would have liked it to be. Uh, for example, in today's environment, it still says that the main, uh, the tip, pick up a Virginia physics textbook, the main component of a television is the cathode ray tube. <laughs> this is Virginia. We got an A grade nationally for our education standards. And by, the mark, by, by and large, we have a great process for managing all these uh, uh, programs. But, but the reality is that the, the world has changed, and it's been seven years since we revisited. And so we have this challenge. So one of the things that we had done was we said, look, uh, we can wait for the next process to review the standards and get them up to speed. Or we could turn to you, 
the people of Virginia, and ask if you would help write your own physics textbook. This may sound a little quirky, but we put out a call for, for solicitation. And folks all over the country volunteered at no cost to write chapters on contemporary physics material, on modeling and simulation, which is a growth industry for Virginia, on nuclear physics, which is another area of growth in Virginia, as well as several other aspects like the, this notion of gravity around dark matter, dark energy, for those who follow physics, an interesting subject. And so we went through four levels of peer review and quality review, and William and Mary ultimately edited the whole thing, and we published for free this open uh, physics flexbook. So from the time we conceived of it, in sort of the August, September time frame, it went live in uh, March, all free. You can download it at virginia.ck12.org. But now school districts are buying netbook computers, like $400 netbooks, preloaded with the physics content. And get this, they're, they're getting rid of the repurchasing of the new physics textbook. The price arbitrage is if they do three textbooks, they funded the netbook. And by the way, you can print these things for three bucks at Kinko's, and it looks just like a regular textbook. I had one. I would have, uh, I'm actually testifying tomorrow on, on the Hill talking about this kind of stuff. So it's an example of a procurement, which is that normally they would have bought the textbook. This is the school department procurement. Now they're in this is Albemarle County, which is outside of UVA. They're going to be, for, for their physics students, there's 600 of them, they're going to buy them all these laptops cheap, preload them with emerging capability, allow them to print them so they can still read the thing, it's cheap, and then uh, save the money off the $165 textbook, which they didn't think was going to be up to stuff anyway, and have that uh, resource available. That's an example of procurement. 